Your Honor, the prosecution asks for permission to move about the court and approach witnesses. Granted for both parties. Your Honor, at this time, the defense would also like to ask the court to instruct the jury, according to Rule 201G, to accept as a miracle fact, um, sorry, material fact, that a side effect of diabetes is in fact anger. The defense asks that this fact not be argued or contested by the prosecution. Your Honor, uh, under Rule 103, Subsection A1, I have a right to object to the defense's uh, motions, and uh, I would like to argue that the defense has neglected to inform the court uh, of the, why this should be a material fact, first of all, or why it's relevant to the case. And they've also neglected to produce any evidence to suggest, to suggest that Mr. Jones is a diabetic. Your Honor, we only recently found out about these developments, actually this past week. And according to Rule 201F of the Federal Rules of Evidence, we are allowed to um, give judicial notice at any point in the trial, which is why we're trying to inform the court today before we proceed. Yeah, I, I find this is a ridiculous attempt at providing a defense for the defendant. Uh, the instance in question was not a violent act, so there was no uh, violence uh, for the particular crime that we, we will be discussing today. Um, and though the defense claims that Julian suffers from diabetes, there's no proof that his history with uh, instances of rage were a, directly a cause of his diabetes. Um, I find it very convenient that the defense suddenly wants to use diabetes as an excuse for Mr. Jones' uncontrolled fits of rage, and uh, they, they have not, you know, told me that they're producing an expert witness uh, to prove or to attest to uh, his medical documentation of diabetes, and I hardly think that the defense counsel is a medical expert to uh, do with the expertise to present that to the court. Your Honor, the prosecution is correct. I am not an expert on the matter, but like I said earlier, um, Your Honor, we're just trying to um, not contest uh, well-known facts amongst the med medical community. Uh, I just, I just simply ask that you allow the uh, jury to decide whether diabetes is a valid excuse for premeditated attempted murder. All right. Well, the motion to dismiss is denied, but the jury is instructed to accept the fact that diabetes can lead to episodes of rage. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, hold on a second. I don't know if I'm recording. They are often the driving force behind impulse and action, but they do not have the final say on what we do. Anger is not and will never be an excuse for attempted murder. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you sit before me as free, law-abiding citizens. Each of you has experienced anger and rage. I am sure each of you has been irritated beyond belief in being the reasonable, rational people that you are. You have controlled your emotion and acted responsibly until that emotion passes. Today you will hear a case about a man who is dangerous from anger. A man who is a threat to those around him. A man willing to deceive an elderly law professor with a poisoned cupcake in an attempt to exact revenge and satisfy his rage. My job as the prosecuting attorney is to present the facts of the case to you. You will see that the defendant has a reputation for violent, uncontrolled temper tantrums. You will watch him deliver a cupcake laced with rat poison to the victim. You will hear the story of his in-class rage and hear testimony uh, of those that know Mr. Jones. They will tell you how angry he gets and how scared they have been for their safety when they are in the vicinity of this terrifying rage. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it is my job to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant, Julian Jones, 
deliberately poisoned the victim in an attempt to satisfy his irrational anger and hate for her. It is your job to observe the facts, to see through the illusion of the defense, and decide for yourself whether the defendant will be held responsible for his rage. This case is not complicated. There is no great conspiracy theory that will be revealed to you today. All you will see and hear is the story of the attempted murder of Dr. Sullivan. What happens after that is up to you. Thank you, Jan. May it please the court. Your Honor, members of the jury and opposing counsel, my name is Jalen Frisbee and I represent the defense in this matter. Imagine being a student at a college or university that you've invested thousands of dollars into in order to obtain a degree that you intend to use to propel yourselves forward into a career that you've dreamed of since you were a little boy girl. Now, imagine studying under a professor who for years you trusted and depended on to guide you through your journey to achieving your goals in pursuit of your dream. Now imagine that very professor yelling at you, telling you that you'll never amount to anything, shattering all of your hopes and dreams in front of a party of your peers with no place to run. How would you feel? How would you react? That, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly what happened to the defendant in this case. Now the prosecution has a burden to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that my client, Julian Jones, is not only guilty of losing his temper, but also attempted murder. And he's gonna do so by bringing forth a series of witnesses who have predetermined biases formed against the defendant. These witnesses, whether they know it or not, um, have been set up by the prosecution to rob my client of his right to a fair trial as outlined in the Sixth Amendment right of the Constitution. Thankfully, Julian has you, ladies and gentlemen, a jury of his unbiased peers who have the duty to find the truth amongst the many irrelevant details that the defense or prosecution is going to present to you today. I ask that you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, remain impartial while you seek the truth of what really happened on November 29th. Thank you. At this time, the prosecution will call its first witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the prosecution would like to call Moni to the stand. You swear to tell the truth and nothing, nothing but the truth. They won't be done. <coughs> Please state your name for the record. Where do you go to school? Jackson College. Do you know the defendant? Yes, I do. How long have you known the defendant? About four years. Were you present in Dr. Sullivan's forensics class mm -hmm. on Tuesday, November 29th? Yes, I was. What happened in class that day? Well, um, the previous Thursday, the class was canceled, so we had some things that we had to do. But the order shifted because we didn't have class. So the people who were set to go on Tuesday didn't need to go. So the people on Thursday didn't have to go. They were prepared. So Julian and a bunch of other students, they were just a little bit early. They were going to get their phone and things like this. So they didn't have class. Uh, did, did Julian give an argument? Your Honor, I object. The Constitution has not laid the foundation for the final question. I'm simply questioning uh, the events that happened in class uh, that day. Uh, this is a matter pertaining to the defendant's motive uh, for trying to kill Dr. Sullivan. Your Honor, Julian is not on trial for murder. He is on trial for attempted. I said trying to kill Alright, let's see this uh, overall. <coughs> Do you think Julian is an angry and violent person? Yeah, I do. Have you seen violent outbursts from Julian before? Oh, yes, I definitely have. Okay. Have you been to football games at Weston? Your Honor, I object. Um, according to relevancy rule 403, this is a waste of the court's time. Your Honor, if you could simply allow my last question to continue, I will establish its relevance as Julian plays football and Moni, being a student that goes to Weston College, can attest to what she has witnessed and observed at the football meetings as far as. Uh, what happened at the homecoming football game? So the he uh the victim went on outside and he ran into water with a lot of broken toys, so he was able to throw the water bottle below the victim. Really good. Did it did it impact her head? Uh, really? Uh, uh,
Where were you on the night of November 29th? On the night of November 29th, I was coming out of the computer lab in the basement. What were you doing in the basement? I was working on the basement. Uh, when did you see them while you were? I saw Julian, um, I told you when we talked to Tony. You posted Facebook off? Your Honor, I object, tell me. Uh, I'll rephrase that. What did you post on Facebook on November 29th? I posted Julian walking Your Honor, I would like to submit to the court the video evidence posted to Moni's Facebook page. Does the opposing counsel object? No objection, Your Honor. I'll submit it to the bail earlier on the previous part of the plan for you, Your Honor. But wait, what are you doing? Um, I'm not going to say to you. Oh my god, Professor Sullivan! Okay. Morning. Is this an accurate depiction of the video you shot? Yes, What were you thinking when you found Dr. Sullivan unconscious? I said, oh, yeah, that's really definitely true. Did you, did you ever think or have reason to believe that Jonah was capable of attempting murder before? I mean, his anger is a bit. Mommy, do you know Julian on a personal level? Yes. Um, how many times would you say you spent time with Julian outside of Objection, life? Your Honor. Under Rule 4, this is a waste of time. We've already established the witness's relationship with the defendant as a classmate. Defense is wasting our time with the client. Your Honor, under Federal Rules of Evidence Rule 602, I'm simply trying to bring out the fact that this witness knows absolutely nothing about the defendant and that um, how she actually personally feels about the defendant is really why she's testifying today. So, how many times would you say you spent time with Julian outside of classroom? And how many times have you seen him in action on the football field? So, front row and center, do you ever interact with the defendant while they're at these games, or do you just mainly observe? Are these the only two places that you've interacted with Julian since you met him? Do you think that you're an expert on Julian's character? Yes. Okay. So have you ever gone to a party with Julian? Yes. Have you ever seen him sit? Yes. Uh, have you seen him stress over a large school assignment? And have you seen him interact with his child or his wife outside of school? Yes. So how can you accurately explain Julian's character if you really want to have a clean Yeah, I object. Under Rule 405B, Methods of Proving Character, uh, under this rule, the witness can testify to specific instances of conduct uh, of the accused in cases in which a character or trait of a character of a person is an essential element of the defense. In pretrial, the uh, defense made it an essential element uh, of, Williams, of Julian's rage as part of their defense, um, and therefore testimony to that fact should be allowed. Do you like Julian? But, like, is he your favorite picture in the world? And why is that? So, back to my original question, yes. you really don't like Julian. Uh, do you think that your dislike for Julian is, in fact, the reason why you're testifying today in court? Objection, Your Honor. Under Rule 608, subsection A1, uh, Your, Your Honor, according to this rule, the credibility of this witness can only be attacked if the defense is trying to prove that she's being untrue. Uh, she cannot be trying to imply that my witness is lying simply because she doesn't like the defense. Your Honor, I'm simply trying to bring out what Moni's motivation for testifying today in court. 